it's a pleasure to be here and talk about health and especially digital health um, at an ESCOM meeting. I believe this is probably the first uh, health-related project, which is um, probably a result of the recognition of uh, health being an enabler rather than an outcome of many of the regional cooperation. So this project is uh, delivered by uh, Technopolis Group. And um, what I think my colleagues uh, introduced in terms of uh, public services and cross-border um, regions are all of interest to us as well. So the scope of the study is really um, embedded in the uh, Urban Partnership on Digital Transition and Action Plan. And they came up uh, relatively late with the idea that the health is absolutely missing from that discussion. So they wanted, uh, through ESPON, to actually bring in the discussion some evidence. And uh, the idea is that um, the data might be out there that is helping health services and social care across Europe and the movement across border for these health services. Um, what they really want to uh, allow is that empowering citizens uh, using their own health data and making the system more efficient um, across Europe. So it's a joint exploitation of existing resources. We have four stakeholders. Um, one is um, from Estonia. Uh, one is the city of Olu in Finland, uh, Sofia municipality here in Bulgaria, and the municipalities um, of Slovenia. And they all want to know what is the state of play in Europe and in their regions, what are the opportunities and challenges for implementation of these services, and what would be the benefit to learning from one another. The methodology is uh, relatively simple. We use a lot of uh, existing data and secondary uh, research in order to establish a, a baseline, which is not really uh, available at the moment. Uh, we use the stakeholder interviews to get really uh, uh, from the various um, stakeholders in, in a, what is required in a health system uh, to tell us about their experiences in the country, very similar to what Sabine said, it's a stock-taking exercise, but also has some kind of foresight of where the countries want to go to and what would be their uh, challenges to implement that. So we hope to come up with um, the uh, best practices in order to have their policy makers to um, make uh, decisions in the future. So we will try to bring them at the back. Um, many of the uh, work that we've been doing are qualitative, not just uh, quantitative. Um, one reason is that uh, many of the data are simply missing, missing in terms of what we heard in terms of comparable data across uh, Europe. But it's also missing because health is a very complex ecosystem. And there are um, many stakeholders who have very different views of how things should uh, be. And um, many of these data are actually kept uh, locally and not uh, published. One uh, uh, study that uh, helped us a lot is a WHO uh, report, which is really mapping uh, the different aspects of e-health across Europe so we could have some uh, nice maps for ESPON to actually visualize the state of play. And the one that you see now is the implementation of privacy protection, which is a very important aspect of health data. I will not show you um, all of them, but uh, we have data on access to the electronic health records in a country, how the electronic health records are shared, what kind of um, specific telehealth services exist in a country, um, whether there are availability of services in terms of remote patient monitoring. So what you see on this slide is that uh, Europe is quite nicely covered where we have data in terms of uh, privacy protection. There are different scales of it. We could color that, but for simplicity, it is a binary uh, map. The next map, which is on the patient records to access uh, through mobile devices, which uh, would be one aspect of mobility and, and uh, ease of access, is obviously much less covered um, in Europe. So what I thought I'd do really quickly, because we are running out of time, to give you a highlight of the four stakeholders of where we are, uh, just to show the diversity of uh, the results we have so far. So here in Bulgaria, um, the e-health was introduced as an idea in the national strategies, and the most recent one actually recognized that there has to be some kind of data exchange in order for this to work. However, there is uh, so far limited implementation of these uh, strategies, uh, except in really small uh, private uh, stakeholders. Um, the challenges are multifold uh, that uh, Bulgaria has to overcome, and we very much hope that uh, with that type of baseline we can provide, uh, there will be 
the evidence um, to implement some of the uh, what they recognized in their uh, future um, directions, an integrated uh, healthcare system, including a register for patient records, which is the really basis for um, a, a public uh, e-health service. Estonia is uh, a very different uh, example. Uh, Estonia established the um, e-government and electronic public health system very early, and the e-health strategy is just sitting in it. The smart specialization uh, strategy uh, also includes e-health, so you can see that when there is a central will, um, there is uh, health, which is ultimately complex, can also flourish on it. So they established central infrastructure and technology standards, and um, many of the structural funds were used in order to establish these. They have very good um, cross-border cooperation with Finland, um, and their approach to patient uh, data is very, very open. Um, basically, everything is accessible uh, if uh, the data subject, we, the citizens, allow that. So um, the central system is there to facilitate many of the healthcare providers to um, provide the data and they uh, can um, basically standardize that and, and provide the exchange. But they recognize actually that providing this technological solution is just part of the solution. Uh, the citizen-centered e-health for the deployment and the uptake is the next phase that they are focusing on. So. Um, Moving on to Finland, which is another example that is technology uh, driven in health and e-health in particular, the digitalization of healthcare is really 100%. It's not an issue there. They have an, uh, a central system, uh, which is old, uh, more than 10 years now, that both uh, healthcare providers and, and users are accessing. And they have um, e-prescription, which is uh, being implemented and uh, through a new Connecting Europe facility, there will be many other countries that will join that kind of uh, standard uh, scheme of uh, e-prescription across Europe. So um, the e-health as a framework and ecosystem is established in, in Finland, which is an amazing help. They develop the necessary uh, trust and transparency that is needed for uh, people to uh, provide the data into central registries and uh, adopt the use of these services. There are obviously challenges even in the country, which is quite surprising coming out of this, that uh, no matter how uh, developed Finland is, it is still fragmented within the country. So traveling from north to the south, the data would not travel with them and they would have difficulty to uh, access the data. So that kind of harmonization in the future will be their uh, key uh, direction and uh, obviously focusing on uh, the processes rather than technologies. And the last um, stakeholder is uh, Slovenia, where, um, again, they had a fantastic start in the early 2000s, and um, due to um, financial crisis and political crisis, uh, that very much stopped. And now in 2015, from central uh, budget, they relaunched the e-health uh, project with the help of Europe, uh, um, e-health uh, interact project as well and they also apply for this Connecting Europe facility to uh, basically get back to the uh, e-health and, and the European um, mainstream. Um, I think it is probably a message to policy makers that if that kind of continuity from strategy to implementation is uh, missing, many of the um, stakeholders will uh, simply start and develop their own solutions. And it, uh, today, Slovenia is very much fragmented, and it's very hard to uh, pull it back together in order to have a national system where data can reside. So um, they have a new strategy. EHAT is very much part of it. And um, hopefully, again, with this uh, project, they will uh, help to press a little bit that agenda. Uh, the last slide is really about what we uh, experienced in terms of successes and challenges in this project. We are. Um, let's say halfway through in the uh, project, um, we will uh, deliver our uh, data by the end of the uh, year. The difficulty is obviously that, as I said, data resides with um, organizations who are not really willing to share the data. And the data which are published and collected um, are uh, not directly relevant to digital health services. There are a lot of enablers that we can use and analyze, but uh, it will be difficult. So we do deep dives in the four countries and we try to understand more the context in terms of legal frameworks, 
cultural attitude and the others uh, what uh, works and how it can be uh, implemented in the local uh, context. Uh, what you could see, we only have four stakeholders, but they are probably representing the extremes of Europe. Um, so what um, Finland is thinking about, which is uh, private health data and how in your pocket you can have all your health data and travel across Europe, is very different from what uh, Bulgaria is aspiring. So we have to be broad and in-depth at the same time to satisfy the stakeholders' expectations. But they are there to support us in terms of uh, finding the right uh, stakeholders within the country. And uh, last but not least, we have uh, ESPON who is very effective in coordinating the project and without that it wouldn't happen. So that's all from me. Thank you.